I want a uh, uh, word with you. That's three words for a start. <laughs> that the girl of Grimshaw's. Oh, big Edna. Hi. Have you been in there knocking and knocking? I beg your pardon? <laughs> I've only admired her from a distance. Have you been in there knocking coppers off a weekly order? <laughs> <laughs> well, you do it for Mrs. Featherstone. Not without sticking them back somewhere else. <laughs> Ah. Are you still doing Open University? Yes. Oh, maybe I could come round one night and we could talk about contemporary themes in literature and uh, you could wear that short dress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're ready yet, Granville, for that short dress. How can she tell? How can she tell? Hey, will you bring that milk in before you get curdle it? <laughs> milk is not made as a stand the, the temperature that Aaron boys operate at. Aaron boy? <laughs> Aaron boy. I'm a real success story, I am, aren't I, eh? Hey, up there goes Granville. He's only been working for his uncle since he was ten years old, and already he's an errand boy. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want me to be the errand boy, would you? I mean, how would you feel then? We're working for an errand boy. I wouldn't mind if I had some decent transport. Oh, you don't start all that again. We were only remarking the other day how well you look on that shop bike. Our shop bike? It's clapped out. Oh, that reminds me. Did we get my Mrs. Blewett's bread order? No, oh, cottage loaf and a bloomer. Yes, she certainly gives that impression. <laughs> hey, Rod, who's this we that was remarking how well I looked on the shop bike? Myself and a certain lady whose taste I admire, even though at times it is slightly medicinal. Her taste, I mean. Nurture Gladys, who else? Now, don't put it all on her. Oh, if, if only I could. <laughs> The times I've tried to persuade her to allow me to be become a private patient. You think I'd be allowed to baboop her now we're engaged? <laughs> but she won't have it. She won't listen. She's a cuddly but stubborn, bless her. <sighs> Does me all the heart good to think of her up there at this very moment. Alone in that huge bed, with ample room for this small private grocer. <laughs> Sleeping the sleep. Of the only just. <laughs> the only just? Yeah, I made a little progress last night with the aid of some uh, Cypress sherry. She's still sticking to her principles, but the only, only just. just. <laughs> okay, Granville, did you warm that pot? No, I warmed that one over there. <laughs> you always ask me that every meal time you say, Gurga Granville. Did you warm up the pot? <laughs> I always warm the pot. Well, there's no need to get all the Vanessa about it. <laughs> have we got to have bacon again? I thought you liked a bit of bacon. I do like a bit of bacon. It's just that I wish you wouldn't make me eat the bacon rind. Very tasty is a bit of our bacon rind. It's tasty enough, but it takes you 40 minutes to chew it. <laughs> Listen, you can't go through life just wasting things. Well, Unless you're nationalised. <laughs> yeah, what about me teeth? I'm nearly down to the canvas on me teeth. <laughs> hey, you look after this uh, bacon and don't let them rashers get all get curled up. I like them they're nice and flat. <laughs> oh, hello. A smartly dressed stranger can come to part with his money. Uh, not exactly. Oh, not exactly. Does that mean he doesn't even count his change? Uh, I was wondering if you could give me directions to uh, Abercorn Street. Give you? 
give you directions to Abercorn Street. <laughs> I can sell you directions to Abercorn Street. <laughs> sell me? You are not from these parts, I take it. Ah, just here on business, actually. Ah, aren't we all, you see? In that case, you will realise that there are the hair overheads. I mean, we have the rates to pay, we have wear and tear, we have the staff to pay. All these were blazing for 40 watt bulbs. <laughs> then, of course, there's the heating. Heating? It doesn't feel terribly warm in here. Well, it might help a bit if you put, put, put the wood in the hole. <laughs> no, you wouldn't feel the heat, you see, because you come from a milder climate, don't you? What, Luton? Look, oh, well, it's a subtropical Bedfordshire, you see, yes. But the locals around these parts, they think this is quite a hot shop. In fact, most of them just come in to get a done to a turn. I can imagine. And in return for this uh, service to a cold customer, a benevolent council allows us uh, struggling shopkeepers to uh, uh, charge for directions on a pair per pro rata basis. <laughs> 30 per per pee for first mile. <laughs> or per per, or per per, or per, or per part thereof. Yeah. And how far is Abercorn Street? Oh, don't panic, don't panic. I'll give you all the shortcuts. You'll do it for less than a pound. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, uh, alternatively, you could make a few uh, token purchases and then, of course, the service would be absolutely free. them flat, he can have them flat. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> there we are, sir. 37p change, thank you. Uh, do, do call again. I don't think so. I may never come this way again. <laughs> the ships that pass in the night, eh? I have the feeling I've run aground somewhere. <laughs> well, you can uh, shove yourself off with that. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't keep it a secret. Where is Abercorn Street? Oh, you just passed it. He's first on the right, down there. I thought everybody in there knew that. <laughs> if I can help possess a swarm of bodies <laughs> as I pass along, then my living will not be in vain. Are you keeping Granville? <laughs> oh. Hi, Wendy. Going my way. Am I going her way? mouth is going to get a kick up the sprockets. <laughs>
It gets so you don't know what to give him for his dinner. Oh, oh is, he, is he back? I think so. He's not sure himself. Oh. Well, 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 which one does he like? Does he like that one? Oh, yeah, he likes that one. Well, well there we are, then. Mind you, he likes that one as well. <laughs> If I get it wrong, he yells at me. Slings it across the kitchen. Oh, does he? Well, I should definitely take the beef burgers. I think you'll find they to travel better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I've seen them use as frisbees, them. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Look, Mavis, you, you just stand there and make your mind up. I'll go and serve Mrs. Fur, Mrs. Fur, Mrs. Fur, Mrs. Fur, Mrs. Fur, that woman over there. It's doing steak. Bless you. <laughs> I'll have a look at that one. That one there. Mm. Is it a good brand? Well, it's been very well behaved on the shelves. <laughs> of course it's a good brand. How long do you think I would last if I started selling rubbish round here? If you want to buy rubbish, you go round to my uh, competitor round the corner. Well, he's less than you are on several items. Well, he's only for five foot one. He can afford to be. <laughs> he has regular reductions. I know, and then look what he's done to him. He needs a stepladder to look over his counter. <laughs> he's always polite. Smarmy, you mean. Smarmy. He's the type that wears brill cream on his teeth. <laughs> that is not his own smile, you know. That's one they can hire from the Grocers Federation. I wouldn't mind, but it doesn't even fit him. If you observe closely, you will find he's wearing the smile of a much larger person. Oh, I, I haven't anything against the man personally. I mean, don't misunderstand me. Outside office hours, he's probably absolutely uh, repulsive. <laughs> but, I mean, he's so, so small, he can't be all that repulsive, can he? Although he does try, doesn't he? Are you going to buy that tin or are you going to bring it up to body temperature? <laughs> So things are so dear in tins, especially around here. Well, you say it's a hair overhead, you see. Mm. I have uh, things are especially flown in. Flown in? Yes. Look, there's a, a pigeon mark on that one. Look. <laughs> Listen. Here comes my uh, private jet now. That is it. Finished. Never again. How's a young man supposed to feel with that squeaking thing between his legs? <laughs> They get easily upset, these, these jet pilots. <laughs> I think it's the uh, vertical takeoff. That's the first time Granville's ever walked past me without saying something. Sounded like something to me. <laughs> I mean something personal. Sounded personal enough to me. <laughs> Why don't you face it? That old shop bike is clapped out. Listen, a drop of oil and a few adjustments, that's all it needs. Come and attend to these ladies. I'll fix your bike for you. It's more than that old oil can. Needs Aladdin's lamp. Listen, just attend to these customers, please. And no hanky panky, but we're widow to hanky. <laughs> Hello, Mavis. Hello, Granville. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you in a hurry, or shall I serve Mrs. Featherstone first? I don't know whether I'm in a hurry or not. No, you're not in a hurry. Oh, aren't I? No. <laughs> well, can I do you, Mrs. Featherstone? Well, it might be all right for certain articles, but to be blunt with you, Granville, a woman of my age feels easier discussing her needs with persons of a more mature outlook. <laughs> well, how about a nice piece of boiled ham? Is it wrapped? Well, I can soon wrap it for you. No, thank you, Granville. It's nothing personal, it's just I could... I could never bring myself to buy anything unwrapped from today's liberated young people. Oh. Don't have to worry about me. I'm still waiting to be liberated. <laughs> if the permissive society reached this far, it must have been while I was out on that damn shop bike. never touched him. Oh, moon of my delight. Keep your voice down, you great fool. What I'm really looking for to, to keep me company at nights is a well-trained, obedient, state-registered nurse. 
One with a cold nose and a warm sure up. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely a warm sure up. <laughs> no household pet should be without a warm sure up. <laughs> you do something about that bike? Oh, it's not the bicycle, my love. It's, it's me. Uh, in the interests of humanity, I think you ought to be able to pop over tonight and have a look at me squeak. <laughs> Don't getting yourself excited. One of these days, you'll be going a funny colour and gasping for breath. Oh, promises, promises. <laughs> when you are. I think being a widow woman suits Mrs. Featherstone. She seems to have taken to it very easily. Well, but why not? She's been practising that gloomy expression for years. <laughs> you know, I get the distinct impression that she likes her husband a lot better now he's dead. Oh, uh, say what you like, he's less argumentative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she doesn't seem very unhappy. At least she knows where he is of an evening. Yeah. <laughs> you can't understand people, can you? I mean, you get Indian widows throwing themselves on fires when their husbands die. Oh, well, but be fair to Mrs. Featherston, Gramble, this is a smokeless zone, isn't it? <laughs> you can hardly expect her to go uh, hurling herself onto the top of the night storage eating. <laughs> expect her to show a bit of emotion. Have you tried overcharging her? <laughs> well, I expect someone to show a bit of emotion when I go. You're only going to Sanderson Street. <laughs> I don't mean when I go out on deliveries, do I? I mean, you know, I mean, when... when I'm dead. Well, uh, just make sure you go to Sanderson Street first, will you? <laughs> I don't want you turning up there after you're dead. Unless, of course, it's your first thing in the morning, in which case they won't notice the difference. <laughs> Can't imagine that somehow. Can you? You know, me being dead. <laughs> get on with it, will you? If there's any of the dying to be done, it's going to be done in your own time. When I go, I want beautiful women tearing their hair. <laughs> I shall leave instructions for a private funeral, but if the crowd rush it, I want you to let them in anyway. <laughs> and every year on the anniversary of my death, I want a mysterious woman in black to place upon my grave a single flower. <laughs> a plain or self-raising? <laughs> Come on, what's all this talk about the dying? Well, we've all got to go sometime, haven't we? You should have gone already to Atkinson to Terrace. Oh, I just thought that Mrs. Featherstone might have shown a bit more affection towards her husband. Listen, she's up at the cemetery every Saturday afternoon. Let's face it, she sees more of him now than she ever did. Uh, if only I'd seen a tear. Just, you know, a single tear. Well, she's the old school that keeps her soldiering on, don't they? Ought to be more to married life than that. She always looked after him. He never came home when there wasn't a meal. Hey, but what about affection, eh? I mean, you know, a bit of a, a giggle, a bit of the old slap and tickle. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, there was someone that and all. Oh, no, now that I don't believe. Oh, yes, there was. Twice a week. <laughs> from her up at Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear, don't stand there with your mouth open. There's a bus coming. <laughs> Get in there into the shop. Go on. <clears throat> What number, Atkinson Terrace, eh? Oh! <laughs> Hello, Mrs Whittington. Oh, is your bread fresh? Mm -hmm. Yes, like the morning dew, Mrs Whittington. I see, wet and soggy, is it? Just like yesterday's. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. It's lovely and fresh, this bread. Listen. Oh, that's right, go on. Maul it about. I'll take one. Right, one small brown sliced look. Uh, but not that one. <laughs> one other small brown sliced look. <laughs> and that's the potted meat. Potted meat, die. Put it in the other room. <laughs> Who have you got in the shop? Oh, Mrs. Whittington. 
Oh, makes your heart bleed for that poor dear dick she married. <laughs> Strange little woman, isn't she? She reminds me rather of a, of a boil I used to get on the back of my neck. <laughs> How much do you want to charge for these? Uh, 30 for, uh, 30 for, for 36 pence. <laughs> Is there nobody happy round here? Would you ask me that when I've cast up tonight, please? I mean in their personal relationships. Well, Mrs. Pryor and her gerbil. <laughs> Enough to put you off marriage for life. Oh, really? Well, if you're not going to get married, what are you going to do for entertainment then, eh? Keep getting yourself signed in by a member. <laughs> You'll soon run out of ink, won't you? Make that 39. <laughs> Before. Are you happy, Mrs. Whittington? With one brown loaf and a quarter of potted meat, is that supposed to do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean with life, with marriage. You read about these things, young men at a certain time of life. Not so certain, never has been certain. Becoming obsessed by older women. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say obsessed. I suppose it's because I've got a big bust. <laughs> Things are never what they seem, Granville. Oh, my bosom may look all right when it's all trussed up. But if you was ever there when I let it all loose, lad, <laughs> it'd scare you to death. Whittington a better loaf, sorry. <laughs> what have you done? Ooh. Have you twisted your knee? No, not exactly, no. <laughs> What's this bike doing in here? Do you have to leave it in the middle of the floor? Can't you find another place for it? I, I just did. <laughs> Believe me, it's better off where it is. Granville, love, can you take this bike out before somebody breaks the neck? Neck? Oh, that's the last thing you've got to worry about with. Here's your, here's your neck. Go on, get it out. Go on. Ow! Oh! 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 Oh, dear. I, I don't know. Pack it in. Oh, I, I, I may have to. <laughs> now, listen, you, listen, you uh, luscious a, a medical person. Well, what can we talk about till I get my breath back? <laughs> hey, hey, your squeak's completely gone. Oh, I was hoping it was only bruised. <laughs> Come on, come on, get in there. Can't you see we, we three won't want to be alone? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be alone. Oh, of course you do, my love. We must have snatched every precious moment we can. You snatched enough last night. Oh, you were very amiable, my love, under the influence of the Cypress Sherry. I've never seen stuff like it for making your buttons come undone. <laughs> It's amazing what you're going to find under the national health, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we have another look? Stop it! Keep your voice down. You'll be embarrassing your Granville. Oh, he's all right. Granville is at present getting ready for a little trip on the new reconditioned dish shop bike, aren't you, Granville? Who is? No, you're never going to get me on that shop bike ever again. Oh, all right, then. I'll, I'll go, go on myself. Hmm. I might even uh, take in Atkinson Terrace. Remember Atkinson Terrace, do you? Where the late Mr. Featherstone used to get his... Uh, used to visit uh, twice a week. <laughs> I never knew the late Mr. Featherstone used to visit Atkinson Terrace. Oh, yes, mind you, he was never the late Mr. Featherstone there. <laughs> what number, Atkinson Terrace? Atkinson Terrace? Is that an echo? Oh. <laughs> Would that be the Atkinson Terrace I'm thinking about? Well, I must go. I've got three open wounds and something septic to see to. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like the La Labour Party conference. <laughs> what about Atkinson Terrace? 
Uh, yes. Well, uh, my friends and I were wondering uh, just how far one could get on the new reconditioned uh, uh, shop uh, bicycle. Uh, Granville, fetch my hat, would you? Oh, uh, my uh, sceptical friend there and my uh, sceptic friend here, <laughs> they decided that you couldn't uh, reach uh, Atkinson Terrace, but I've determined to, to prove them wrong. What, that old bike? Why don't you get him a new one? Oh, no, it's the hair overheads, you see. Oh, th thank you, Granville. Why do you want your hat, anyway? Oh, you can never be seen without a hat in in Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> uh, trousers, possibly. <laughs> just a minute. Before anybody else goes, I'd like to know just what it was you were discussing about Atkinson Terrace. <clears throat> what number Atkinson Terrace would that be, Mrs Featherstone? Never you mind what number that might be. Granville, are you going to come and see this or not? All right, well, well, come in. <clears throat> I'm g going to start on le level ground. <coughs> I'll to show you who can reach Atkinson to Terrace. <laughs> See? No squeak. Your front wheel looks loose. Rub it! <laughs> Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> I'll be I'll be all right well, when I get my wind back. Where does it hurt? As if I didn't know. <laughs> it's the hair, hair overhead, you know. <laughs> <sighs> what a day. You can't carry on like that without having your rates reduced. <laughs> I must say, Mrs. Featherstone looked very striking in black. I wonder if Nurse Gladys is thinking of going into black underwear when her mother dies. <laughs> I would certainly try to talk her out of it. <laughs> Lord, let Mrs. Gillespie come in for her bread and keep our Granville away from Atkinson Terrace. <laughs> what number? I don't know the number. <laughs>